Um, the Space Brothers had colonies. It had, we're introducing some elements of America to this technology and some elements in Russia, and they had a colony in Russia, and they had other colonies around the world. Fascinating enough. Now, the Space Brothers, the Damsky Space Brothers, all have one thing in common. They all speak German. That's, that's the funny thing. It's the funny thing about it. Here you have a colony of Nordic, Nordic aliens who all, all speak with a German accent. Now, at the time, I thought that was rather humorous. We know now that something else was afoot, something else was going on. They never had their New World Order, and one of the funny reasons was is the reason he actually gives you. Um, he said at the time that the hierarchy, that's what he believes, some, some hierarchy of angelic beings are watching out for us. I doubt that very much, but in some hierarchy of angelic beings called off uh, the meeting, the first meeting with humanity, and all these scenarios called it off because them and the Space Brothers thought it wasn't time yet. It wasn't time yet. So their New World Order was held up according to their New Age attaché by the Space Brothers. Now that may sound ridiculous, and it is, because they're not really Space Brothers. There's much more rational explanation. They're, you, can, you can say they're either Russian or they're part of some other, uh, nor, some other distinctly Aryan New World Order. Um, uh, but they, they, they basically, we know now they screwed them over. Yeah, they, they basically screwed them over. Their partners, who they thought their partners were after World War II, and if you've listened to this whole podcast, and if you've looked at any of the material I've, I've linked you into, there's no doubt that they had a partnership with, 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 uh, second generation Nazis, or Nazis after World War II, let's call them Nazi International. They had a partnership with this group. Paperclip scientists. There was a partnership with them in Russia. And an uh, element of Anglo elites went into, went into cahoots with them. And they ended up screwing them over. In other words, the white rabbit, team white rabbit, elements of team white rabbit has totally screwed over team, team pink rabbit. So why I disagree with his, his particular scenarios on uh, the hierarchy and the space brothers, I do agree that they were screwed over or things were called off. And, and, uh, Team Pink Rabbit just learned about this sometime between 1998 and September 11th, 2001, or 2002, right before, right before the second Gulf War, uh, that they've been screwed over. So this is kind of an interesting conversation. I've alluded to this before, but I'll go one step further in this particular scenario. I'll talk about where these guys first screwed them over, where, where it became, it came out. It came out actually in, in the New Age rhetoric. Not that it's not that the story is completely true, because there's a lot of lies to it. It's a lot of New Age propaganda for the New World Order. But there is a kernel of truth to the Space Brothers said it wasn't time. <laughs> it's just kind of funny. So here you have uh, the New Age attaché, uh, totally funded by our enemy, in 1990, reading back in the past, and reading what they said after these golden opportunities passed, uh, saying that the Space Brothers and the hierarchy called it off. Now, whether or not it's true or not is, is speculative. I believe that someone screwed them over. I think we see that to be true now. Why? Because we have the Chinese in the equation. To answer your question correctly, I've got, I've got to give you a lead-in. The reason I have an ace in the hole is because I actually know who they were funding way back when and what they were saying back when they had partners you know, you got all the you got all the paperclip scientist um, Von Braun, Werner Von Braun, running around, and he's partnering with the Anglo elites. He's dead now, but he was never their partner. They've been screwed over, and 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 th- that much is is crystal clear to me, uh, based on reading. Uh, all you have to do is read a little bit between the lines, because there's no reason in the late '80s, early '90s, my enemy shouldn't have had a new world order. They control the media. They control what we see. Uh, if you've got advanced technology, you could easily roll it out on people and, and scare them or, or make them believe anything. And it's not that difficult to do. I mean, after all, when, 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 when Europeans first started landing F-16s in, in various, different, uh, various different South Sea Islands, they thought they were from another world. You can only imagine what would happen if some big black triangle landed in, in, uh, in Louisville, Kentucky. <laughs> you don't know, you know, you really don't know what they're capable of. They, they have technology that they're getting ready to surprise the world with. Pink rabbits do and white rabbits do. But their partners were never really their partners. That's what comes out through the new age guys. Now, what's interesting about this is World War III is often thought to play a key role. The reason for that is the way my enemy thinks. World War I got my enemy the League of Nations. World War II got Team Pink Rabbit the United Nations. World War III, what they are looking to do, they are looking to convert, and the USA is the easiest apparatus because the USA has an international private central bank. It is, by and large, it's a Federal Reserve System. It's the United States Federal Reserve System. It's a private central bank, but they are international now. 
Um, it also has many international type of organizations, whether we like it or not. So it's very easy to dissolve America in their minds into a global super state. In other words, they're going to use World War III instead of getting the United Nations, they're going to use World War III for uh, their particular global apparatus, to move into their global apparatus, which will have no nationality, uh, no race, and all that other type of stuff. And based on the success of World War I and World War II, they assumed, uh, or they assume that they can get it. They can do that. They're going to have to do a couple other larger scenarios, because obviously you're not just going to have a, a world war and, and bring the world together. That's where the knockoff alien invasions and the, and the asteroid events and all this other crazy stuff they talk about, that's where that comes in. Um, but that is the reason they want World War III, by and large. Many groups is believe it will kick off a global community, a true global community, uh, where the United States and, and the Anglo-American, at least especially, have played a huge overwhelming role to bring about. Now, why China? China, quite simple. Let's go back in time. If you don't have your New World Order by, 19, by early 1990, if someone we know in hindsight, and hindsight vision is always 2020, and it not only is 2020, it lends itself to the truth, that these space brothers, that, that this whole entire apparatus with Russia, someone there screwed them over. The Germans brought down the Berlin Wall. There was never going to be some peace deal breakout and some knockoff alien invasions. Whoever, whoever uh, Team White Rabbit ran a game on them, their partners weren't really their partners. And so if if you start getting an inkling that, that, that you've got to go with some other scenarios, well, you've got to do some things to keep America afloat. Um, one of the ways they did this was w with the first Gulf War. You know, Saddam Hussein invaded Ku Kuwait under the auspices that uh, the Western world thought it was okay, <laughs> and then they attacked him for it. We have the first Gulf War in the early 90s, right? Right after um, this particular piece I'm looking at, right after this was written. I mean, these, these New Age groups are ready to go in the late 80s, early 90s. But they, they died down. Something happened. The, the hierarchy, the Space Brothers, or someone called off the big events uh, for whatever reason. Uh, but, but what isn't speculative is what happened afterwards. We have the first Gulf War. And then after the first Gulf War, the mid-90s, we have the real Chinese push the real Chinese uh, social engineering uh, by the Anglo elites that happened in Anglosphere really starting in the mid to late 90s. I mean, China has a public, uh, a government-issued uh, currency. They issue their currency um, debt-free, um, debt-free, and, and they really have grown a lot since then. If you listen to many of my previous pieces, and I'm going to actually throw in another piece on this MP3, so just, so just hold on. You're going to hear a little bit more about this. Um, but the Chinese were going gangbusters. I mean, they're doing everything possible to give things away to China, to build Chinese up, China up um, into their last window of opportunity, which is right now. Or they feel it's right now. It's do or die. Um, why they got cut off short, I'm guessing the answer is their space brothers. In other words, they don't have till 2050. We went over this eight ways to Sunday. If you look at their actions in building museums in the Middle East, they don't have it. But it probably has something to do with these damn space brothers. Whoever they are out there, <laughs> telling them uh, at the last minute, pulling the rug out from underneath them. And so now they're, they were caught without a partner, and they let the Chinese in as a junior partner. They do everything under competitive cooperation. It looks like the Chinese, elements of Chinese and elements of the Anglo elites are competing, but they're not. They already have an agreement ahead of time, because the Chinese were basically led into the game. Uh, they don't... They need the Chinese. They don't need the Chinese as much as as much as they want you to tell as much as much as they want you to think they need the Chinese. Uh, but uh, they're allowed to sit at the table, and and everything in this new world order goes in this group goes to the new world order. And the Anglo elites, especially the Anglo American elites, have a huge seat at the table. They got the biggest seat at the table, and they can hand out other seats. So they handed out some other seats to China, and China spiel is they you know uh, they export goods to us and they buy our debt. Um, the actual um, Saudi oil deal is is you price your oil in dollars and you're allowed to buy what you want to with your oil dollar with your petrol dollars, um, but in the Chinese the Chinese business class has played that has played that part quite well. Now the Chinese have some problems internally internally because their military, their military is not all on board. Many of you have seen this um, this stealth jet which they got stealth technology apparently from Russia according to them and they brought out a stealth jet that looks similar to ours. And it took the president of China supposedly by surprise. I actually believe that because there's there's elements in the military. There's element. There's two sides to China, and they can go at it. 
they can go at it. Many people have heard of the rape of Nanking or when the Japanese <laughs> took over Nanking, the Chinese city, and how horrific it was. What you don't know is elements of China help them. Yes, they, this, the, these groups are not all on the same side, so anything goes inside China. Now, do I think the Chinese are going to screw them over? Possibly. Possibly. One side of China wouldn't, because one side of China wants a seat at the table. Another side of China, um, another side of China is, is, uh, is another story. And we've went into this. I've went into this uh, quite a bit. So you can go back and listen to the podcast if, if you have any questions about it. I can go into it from different angles, but there's a lot of unknowns within Asia com- coming out, coming into these events. But the Chinese are basically needed to some extent to pull off to pull off their game or to keep their game going. And in doing in doing so, elements of China, Pink Rabbit and Pink Rabbit Bankster, especially in China, um, have their uh, have a seat at the table. Why did they give themselves a a public central bank? Well, it makes good policy. It helps them grow fast, and you're going to have to grow China really quickly from the 90s to now. Um, you're also, uh, you know, they would eventually shut it down and convert it to uh, Pink Rabbit Central Bank, Red Hippo Central Bank. But uh, there's two sides in China, so it's, it is a tough call on that. But basically, they, they did it so they could grow quickly, just like Nazi Germany did it to grow quickly, just like uh, you grow fast with those type of uh, with those type of central banks, it allows uh, they don't have anything holding them down. There's no they're issuing a currency debt free basically. I've went into this before, but there are many different speculations, and that's all it is on why they gave them this private central bank, but or public central bank. But it's quite e- it, it, the, the answer is quite simple to help them grow extremely quickly um, for for these events to make them a suitable partner to give them a seat at the table. Uh, but at the same time, when they dissolve this into their new world order, they're going to have the forefront seat at the table. And the Jews, the Jews are right there. The Jews are all over the place in this, the pink rabbit new world order. The Jewish elites are. You can't, you can't have one without the other. Um, they do a lot of legwork and they help on a lot of different areas. They're not the, they're not the sole deciding voice like most white nationalists think. And you're going to find that out in the first round. Um, but they are there. They are very active and very visual, especially when it comes to the, the Federal Reserve System and everything else. But the Chinese were built up, and they did a great deal, a, great, a ton of social engineering, a ton of social engineering in regards to propaganda about the Chinese are this and the Chinese are that, so much so that many white nationalists believe it. Um, but going back in time, I don't worry about this New World Order because at the most dangerous time for our race, these space brothers in this so-called hierarchy called it off. Um, <laughs> and if you didn't have it in the late 90s, you most likely aren't going to have it when my race is on a, a consistent message taking over Iceland. Uh, and Iceland is key ground because that's where Europe meets North America. That's very special. It's good stuff. But if you didn't have it in the late 80s with all that going for you, you're most likely not going to get it now. It doesn't mean you're not going to try. It doesn't mean they're not going to go to World War III. They are, but they believe World War III will springboard this. As World War I sprung, sprung the League of Nations, as World War II sprung the United Nations, World War III will spring their informal American global entire empire into a formal global empire. That is, that is the end of the nation state, these big regional blocks. And they have many different scenarios and versions. Most of my listeners have heard of the North American Union. They've always spun stuff like that out. They've always put stuff like that out. Some of them work, some of them don't. Some of the international institutions they want to dissolve national so- sovereignty into and have been dissolving national sovereignty into them. Some of them have contradictory tones and messages. Um, and the, I, some people believe that's done for a particular reason. You know, it's a big, wuzzing, big buzzing and a, and a whirling go toward this new world order. Um, but they will go for it. Uh, and they've started this process of attacking Iran. It will start with an attack Iran. And after that, events will get out of their control. Now, whether or not China screwed them over, elements of China will, and elements of China won't. Whether or not, uh, but the Chinese do not hold the cards. I was given an interesting piece on who owns the U.S. national debt. And this was ri- written by, it looks like, Pierre Duplessis. Duplessis. Uh, and, and it's talking about, it's it's in it's from South Africa and it talks about uh, who who the U.S. government owe, owes money to. It talks about all the U.S. national debt and these are these are calculations of 2011. And it'll give you some idea. 42.2 percent of the debt of the United States is owned by U.S. individuals and institutions, and I put quote unquote institutions. 17.9 percent.